Good morning and welcome to Bridlington Priory. Before I go any further, let me just say that there are tremendous internet problems this morning all over Bridlington. Whether it's weather related, I don't know. Um, it's bitter outside, there's a, a blasty wind from the east and snowstorms are swirling around. There's no coverage of snow, but it's one of those days when the sort of snow's been blustered around on, the, on a bitter wind. Anyway, I know that uh, some internet networks are down across Bridlington, including the church's internet. Um, I'm very grateful to Phil Wattleworth, Phil Wattleworth for having come up and done something, uh, the technicality of which is entirely beyond me, but he's done something to install an alternative mobile router or something. Anyway, at the moment we are transmitting on Phil's internet. Grateful to him for that. Just a warning though, if something does go wrong and we suddenly go down in the middle of the service, um, all is not lost. We have, as well as transmitting from a phone, we have a camera here recording the service. So the full service will be recorded and that recording will be uploaded this afternoon if the whole service can't be transmitted. So all will not be lost, but there may be some interruption. Now, the church's calendar tells us that today is the second Sunday before Lent. But for people of Bridlington, this Sunday has a much greater significance than that. What's really significant in Bridlington about this Sunday is that it is the nearest Sunday to the night between the 9th and 10th of February. And it was on that night in 1871 that the great gale of Bridlington Bay occurred. So this is Great Gale Sunday. And mathematicians will already have worked out that not only is it Great Gale Sunday, but it's Great Gale Sunday on the 150th anniversary of that significant event. And therefore it's a Sunday when the frustration and pain of being in lockdown is particularly felt. Great Gale Sunday is always a big event in Bridlington, a big event in the Priory, and this year uh, the Archbishop of York had accepted an invitation to preach at this service. Obviously he's not here, there's no congregation here, but we are going to um, mark the occasion in this service and uh, be assured that although it's not a public event to which people are invited, the lifeboat crew will be laying a wreath and having an act of commemoration at the monument in the churchyard. The frustration and pain uh, just piles up this weekend because as well as being the 150th anniversary of the Great Gale, 2021 is the 80th anniversary of the founding of the Air Training Corps and Bridlington Squadron, 252 Bridlington Squadron, was one of the first in the country to be started in the same year. So it's the 80th anniversary of the beginning of the Bridlington Squadron of the Air Training Corps. Therefore, yesterday, we were expecting to have an enormous service in here uh, for the whole of the York and East Yorkshire wing of what's now called the RAF Air Cadets. We expect the place to be full of cadets in uniform. Uh, we've been planning that well before coronavirus was ever heard of. Obviously there was no service. So the frustration and the pain of lockdown is felt very uh, greatly today. We are though going to celebrate the uh, Holy Mysteries in this service. We're going to remember the Great Gale. And in addition to that, there will be um, our usual uh, platform of uh, our usual portfolio of streamed services throughout the week. This evening at six o'clock, the Priory's Associate Minister, the Reverend Christine Strand, will um, um, premiere a reflection. There will be evening prayer every evening from the Chapel of St John of Bridlington at six o'clock Monday to Saturday, and Messy Church streamed at four o'clock on Friday. Um, a domestic notice, or a notice of a rather more domestic nature, for regular worshippers at the Priory. Uh, this year in Lent, 
we're going to be studying the uh, Living in Love and Faith material which the Church of England has produced, asking everybody to engage with during the course of 2021 about issues of identity and gender and sexuality. We shall be having uh, groups at least on Sunday afternoon, Tuesday evening and Wednesday morning. The Wednesday morning group is already full, um, so there are still spaces available on Tuesday evening and Sunday afternoon. If it proves too popular, it, it will be by Zoom, of course. Therefore, that restricts the number of people, I think, probably to make it work even more great than the size of a sitting room does. But if we do need to put on more groups, we shall do so. If you would like to be part of one of those Lent groups on Sunday afternoons or Tuesday evenings uh, during Lent, um, will you please either uh, message the Facebook page, the Friends of Brilliant and Priory Church Facebook page, or get in touch with me some other way. And we'll make sure that uh, you've got the material, uh, that you're allocated to a group, and that if need be, we start more groups. Let's now, though, just be still and uh, prepare ourselves to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The first Bible reading this morning is taken from the first chapter of the book of Proverbs. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffings, and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you have refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. This is the prologue in the first chapter of St John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I said in my introductory comments, today is Great Gale Sunday. In any year, that's a major event in the Priory's calendar. A set-piece event with a church full 
one of those occasions when the wider community stakes its claim on the life of the Priory and when shared memory is articulated by the voice of faith in the public square. This year, the 150th anniversary of the Great Gale of 1871, the Archbishop of York had accepted the invitation to take part in even bigger and better celebrations than normal. Our inability to welcome Archbishop Stephen to the Priory for the first time is a bitter pill to have to swallow with the coronavirus restrictions. It's important though that we do not neglect the occasion, but rather be faithful to our duty to keep telling the story, to honour the memory of all who died on that night, and to be reminded of the lessons that keep on needing to be relearned in every generation. The Great Gale took place on the night between the 9th and 10th of February 1871. And this is what happened. February the 9th, 1871, was an unseasonably calm day. As a result, an unusually large number of vessels were tempted out from Newcastle into the still seas to travel down the coast, taking coal to London and beyond. Many were frankly unseaworthy. Many were overloaded. Many had loose cargoes of coal heaped up on deck. Overnight into the 10th of February, as the ships passed Bridlington, they took refuge in the bay because a storm had come from the northeast. Flamborough Head was sheltering them. But the wind changed direction, spun round to be from the southeast, blew up into a hurricane, and was accompanied by blinding sleet and snow. The ships were smashed against Sewerby Cliffs and the promenade wall at Bridlington. Thirty vessels were wrecked and 70 or so sailors lost their lives. In the midst of all this, there are inspiring stories of heroism and courage. The repeated rescue attempts by the lifeboat crews in the Harbinger and the Robert Whitworth, the Coast Guards who swam out the nearest wrecks to save ship's crew, the perseverance of lifeboat crew who returned to shore exhausted with hands raw and bleeding, and the volunteers who stepped in when the crew was spent. Of those 70 or so who died on that night, and we can't be actually absolutely sure how many did, but of those 70 or so, 43 are buried in the churchyard in this church, Bridlington Priory. They weren't all buried at once, because bodies were being washed up from the sea over quite a long period. There were a number of burials over a number of months. At the largest burial, though, on the 14th of February, 23 people were all buried at once. Their bodies were all brought up from the yard behind the Albion pub on Hildethorpe Road, which was being used as a temporary makeshift mortuary. Can you imagine a cortege of 23 horses and carts making its way up St John Street, each bearing a coffin? One of the plans for marking this 150th anniversary was to reenact that procession. And when they arrived at church, it wasn't simply a question of a committal at the graveside. The coffins were brought into church for a funeral service and were all lined up on forms. 
before being carried back out into the churchyard as the dead march was played on the organ. Just imagine, 23 coffins in church all at the same time. 23 out of the 43 which in total were brought here. The Great Gale of 1871 is an event which is engraved on the collective memory of Bridlington. Part of the identity of Bridlington is indeed that it's the town that remembers the Great Gale. It was though not just a local event. The ships that were lost were registered to ports up and down the length of the east coast. But the bodies of those who died were not repatriated, as it were, to their grieving families in Sunderland or Harwich or Felixstowe or Whitstable. They were simply dragged ashore and the good people of this town ensured they had a decent Christian funeral and were provided with a final resting place far from home in a shady corner of the churchyard of this ancient church. There were no headstones engraved with their names, but their collective loss was later commemorated by the erection of the Great Gale Monument over the place where they were buried. And if those souls were being mourned at the hearths of cottages the length of the country, the message of the scandal of their loss was being echoed down the corridors of power at the heart of the nation. For years, the Christian social reformer Samuel Plimsoll had been campaigning for the statutory regulation of merchant shipping in order to mitigate precisely the sort of tragedy which unfolded here in 1871. His efforts at best had come up against deaf ears and at worst had been cynically resisted by those with vested interests in inflating the profits of shipping companies. The nationwide outrage at the avoidable deaths of so many at Bridlington was a clarion call that garnered support for his campaign. Merchant shipping was regulated. Health and safety measures were introduced. The Plimsoll line, which is still used today in international shipping, is a direct result of the Great Gale of Bridlington in 1871. Every life that has been saved across the world because ships have not been overloaded beyond the Plimsoll line is a tribute to the lives of those who were washed ashore and buried in this place 150 years ago. And what, you might ask, has the Christian faith to say to all this? Well, the Christian faith has been speaking throughout the story. It is the Christian faith that ensured those bodies were given care and dignity. It's the Christian faith that provided the language and the ritual with which to afford them the dignity of a proper Christian funeral. It's the Christian faith that provided the hallowed ground so their final resting place could be commemorated. It's the Christian faith that inspired and empowered Samuel Plimson. Plimsoll, it inspired and empowered him to transform the tragedy of their loss into an agent for justice and reform. And it's the Christian faith that provides scriptures to illuminate our response. It would, of course, be crass to read the book of Proverbs 
in a way that suggests that when panic strikes like a storm and calamity comes like a whirlwind, it's because God is vengeful and angry. But it is entirely right to say that when we see avoidable loss of life, as we did here in February 1871, it's because we have hated knowledge, chosen not to fear the Lord, had none of his counsel, and have despised his reproof. We've put greed and profit before the sanctity of life. The lesson of the great gale is to heed the call of Proverbs to stop being simple, to stop delighting in scoffing, and to stop cynically rejecting expert opinion. The sonorous prologue to St John's Gospel explains how and why. Because the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory. The collect we prayed earlier in this service just happens to be the collect for this Sunday, the second Sunday before Lent. But it couldn't more concisely collect our thoughts and prayer for this 150th anniversary of the great gale of Bridlington Bay. It said, Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness. On this 80th anniversary of the founding of the Air Training Corps, we give thanks to you, Almighty God, for the many young lives that have been transformed and given purpose through it. We pray for the Royal Air Force Air Cadets today, especially the Bridlington 252 Squadron with its officer in charge, Bob Hill, that it may continue to be a nursery of instruction public service and self-respect. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. On this 150th anniversary of the Great Gale of Bridlington Bay, we commend to your sure keeping, O Lord, and to their eternal rest, all who died on that night. Among them Robert Pickering, John Clappison, Richard Atkin, James Watson, David Purden and William Cobb, members of the lifeboat crew. We give thanks for the selfless service of lifeboat crew along the decades and particularly give thanks and pray for today's crew. Grant them courage and protection each time they respond to a call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Heavenly Father, that the rollout of the Covid vaccines has kept to schedule and pray that it will continue to do so. We give thanks for the decrease in infection rates, hospitalisation rates and death rates and pray that it may be sustained. We offer to you our frustrations and our yearning for a relaxation of restrictions and ask you to grant us patience and goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, especially members of the Priory community and those for whom we've been asked to pray. Mike Leeson, Sue Saxby, Baby Ethan, Pat Broadwell, Poppy Halafihi, Claire Warding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those whom we love but see no more. We ask you to assist us to honour their memory and to keep alive their influence upon us. We pray for the souls of all who have died in recent days, among them Mary Cooper, Michael O'Connor, Carol Shaw, James Metcalf, David Wright, Ian Burbage, Audrey Greenwood and Fred Askew. We ask you to comfort and strengthen all who mourn for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us therefore pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
Lord and giver of every good thing, we bring to you bread and wine for our communion, lives and gifts for your kingdom, all for transformation through your grace and love made known in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of him. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St John of Bridlington and all the saints, to, your, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so in confidence we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. The body of Christ given for us all. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us all. Amen. Let us pray. God our Creator, by your gift the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.